Well, what what else? What is there to talk about? I mean, it's Every, the NFL. It's week fourteen. Everything. everything. Yeah. I mean, this is the time Absolutely. of year. Uh, when are you going to start talking college football, Jim? Um, well, I have some plays. I no, I don't want to hear about your plays. When the Bulls get here. When are you going to start watching college football games and when getting get involved? The, when they get to the twelve-team playoff. Okay, so so because, after the conference because, championships. I mean, these con these conference championships. Some in some cases they don't even matter. I mean, they they might end up not having conference championships if you have a, a team that's playing in a conference championship and their season, their whole thing of getting into the into the playoffs matters and the teams over here you got play, teams that are not playing in the conference championships and they're already in that's not fair these guys have to play another game and the risk of losing and these other players these other teams are not in and they have no risk of losing that's not fair at all no it's always been the biggest divide where a team earns their way to a conference championship game and loses it, and they lose the potential to play for a championship. It doesn't make any sense at all. Whereas a team like Alabama, who's camped at home and isn't playing, isn't risking anything, could receive a, could receive a, a path into the playoffs watching a, a team like SMU lose, as a, for instance. You with yeah. me? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, sense. Alabama, it's so, it's so political. If Alabama could have eight losses and they'd still try to get them in. Yep. Yeah. Well, I take a look at Georgia too, because uh, you know you just talk about maybe a team losing and it knocks them out. Well, that could be SMU. So I, I, I was talking to my Georgia guy. I interviewed him, and I asked him. I said, "Okay, from, from what you're hearing, is there any chance if Georgia loses the SEC championship, that'll be three losses? Any chance that maybe that they'd have to wait to find out if they'll still be in?" And he was like, "No." It, Matter of fact, we think we'll get a home field. Even we'll get a home game, even if we lose. <laughs> so Georgia can lose the SEC championship game, go three losses, and they'll still get a home game in the first round. But SMU, if they lose the, the ACC championship game, they'll be lucky to make the playoffs. Well, look, South, look where, look South where Carolina, Georgia is. Miami, South Carolina, and Miami probably should be considered, but they're, they're probably sitting at home. Well, yeah, South but, Carolina's got the most to great. Absolutely. Miami. Well, but they have three losses also. Okay. Yeah. Right. And uh, the, the thing with yes. at least, at yes. least South Carolina is playing, uh, you know, it's like, it's funny. It's like whenever you're in the basketball committee every year, depending on who, who gets in and who doesn't, they always give you a different answer of what they're looking for, you know, because it fits their criteria. Uh, so that's why they give it. But it's like the South Carolina thing. Well, apparently you don't care about who's hot, who's playing their best football. Because if you did, you, you'd, you'd have South Carolina. Yeah, they're because the they're best clearly... team in the country right now. Yeah. But doesn't it always come down to ratings, TV ratings, money? Absolutely. Spot? They and won't they... admit it, but absolutely. Of course. Of and course. no, no, and no, South Carolina is going to join nothing. And and then and then he had the nerve, the commissioner, to say when they asked him on the show, Fowler asked him on the show, okay, well, if, is there any team that's not playing? South Carolina, Alabama, so forth. Is it or Alabama's on the outs? I mean, it's on the ins. But see, South Carolina, Miami. Are there any teams that's on the outs that's not playing? Is there anything that could happen in the games that could affect their potential outcome? And he said, "There's nothing in our models that we see that that could happen." In other words, <laughs> Miami, South Carolina, you got no chance. But the thing that didn't make any sense to me was, well, how is that possible? If Clemson, what if Clemson beats SMU and wins the ACC championship game? That means South Carolina has just – that's another notch on their resume that they will have beaten the ACC champion, and you're not giving them any – that doesn't matter to you. So you're saying it doesn't matter to you if Clemson if, – if South Carolina just beat the ACC champion on their home field, it doesn't matter to you. Well, you, there, There's an interesting point that you brought up earlier about uh, Georgia and – you know, this game is for all intents and purposes is a home game or home neutral site for them. They open their season up in the Mercedes Dome Bowl or Mercedes yeah. Dome. They're going to play this there, and there's a good chance they're going to make it to the championship game there. They will have played three games in this same stadium, Georgia, if they make it to the championship game. And if you end up saying, how did a two-loss team ever win the national championship? It's because they're parked at home at the Mercedes Dome in Georgia. Couldn't they play the Peach Bowl too? Uh, could they play in the Peach Bowl? Yeah. 
Uh, the Peach Bowl is at the Peach Bowl is is Georgia, is, isn't it? Is, is, a, is a stepping stone to the national championship. Yeah. yeah so there could m- probably be four games yeah. for Georgia to p- have played. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they'll get the Peach Bowl and then the championship game there. So, how about yeah. that? Yeah. So that is, uh, uh, it is what it is, but we, we, we deal with it. Uh, but I think the good thing about college football is that, as we learned this year with the transfer portal, is that it's going to be wide open now. And it's going to be a lot of fun uh, because you just can't make predictions now. Now, now in our preseason predictions, Mark, and hopefully, Jim, you'll be back talking college football next year when the season begins. Uh, but when we make our preseason <laughs> predictions, uh, if we make a prediction out of the out of the blue, nobody can say anything to us because well, look at one all of the craziness that's happening. One of the reasons I backed off this year is because of the transfer portal and then, you know, NIL, because I felt there was going to be so much chaos that it was going to be so much more difficult to sure. figure things out. And there was a lot of the rivalries away. Yeah. And, you know, I said, you know, I'm going to focus on what I, what I do well at. And fortunately it's turned out the, I mean, the last 40 games have been remarkably good in the NFL for me. So, if if I would have been do- doing college and spending hours out on that, I probably wouldn't have done as well in the other sports. I could see that being the case. I guess you just have to decide then whether or not that's going to be what you're going to do moving forward because it's not changing. Well, yeah, but it'll it'll settle down. We'll get used to it, and you know it. Now you got to get used to the chaos. Yeah, you got to remember. Primarily, I do handicap for customers. But I have always said I bet on the same games I give my customers. I'm in the business of betting and making money. That's how I make a living is by betting my own money. So it's it's whatever I give a customer, believe me, I have substantial money on that play. So, so that means there are handicappers out there that don't do that? Yes. Oh, a yeah, lot. for sure. A lot. Ninety percent don't. Ninety percent really. so, do not so, bet their own money. Some big, huge people that are in the industry that don't bet. Exactly. Don't bet. Exactly. Right. And is that just because that's like the way that they think? It's sort of like if you're a drug dealer, stay away from taking drugs. You can just sell it. Is that the same thing about the way they feel? Oh, I'm not going to wager and, and risk well, my money. You can risk your money, but I'm not risking they, my money. Either they don't have enough to gamble or they have the, the wife takes care of the dollars and they don't get any to spend yeah, they're, they're <laughs> or, right. or, you know, or they just don't have confidence in their picks. I mean, you know, it's, it's, wow. I, I don't know, but I spend so much time doing the work. I mean, last night I had the, I had the dog and the over. Now I could have lost. I mean, we could lose any bet we give out, but that was a substantial five, you know, five figure win for me. Big way hit, so, yeah. You know, and it could have been a five figure lose, loser. You know, you know, it's, That's I the do way it should be. I bet my own money. It's the way you should be. It's the way it should be. Yep. I remember. Bet. Remember the Stardust Gym, the contest there. Oh, I remember. Yes. I remember when uh, Phil Steele was going up against another person. And John Kelly was the host, and John Kelly liked to always prod. He liked to just uh, unnerve the, the the people that were. Uh, yes, uh, yes, yes. That was his way. And he uh, he asked Steele. Okay. He says, "Yeah, I know you run one of the biggest ser- sports services in the country. What's your normal wager? How much do you normally bet in a game?" And Steele looked at him. He says, "I don't bet on the games." And the crowd started booing unmercifully. <laughs> That's well, they should have. <laughs> but you know, yeah, you have to ask this question. If you are giving me a play to yeah. bet my, you know, I don't care if you bet fifty dollars. At least yeah, bet fifty sure. dollars. Yeah. You know, but it, it, if you're telling me to bet my money, my say I'm a five thousand dollar better, and you don't have enough confidence to put a hundred bucks on it. Sure. I yeah. mean, okay, that's. Yeah. It's, that's that's a hard one to sell for that's me. something I, that, I, that he shouldn't have admitted <laughs> if that was the case when i started in the late 60s the first ad i ran does a sports handicapper follow his own advice and the answer and the answer said jim feist does there you go and you know and i've always done it it's been almost six decades steel's so, answer should have been only my bookmaker knows <laughs> <laughs> anything yeah anything exactly. except the answer he gave yeah Exactly. I know you guys have been uh, 
just hearing how you've talked about the, because uh, we were talking off the air about the game last night, and the Detroit Lions, are, are, most people consider right now the Lions are the best team in football. Uh, but uh, Jim has been very high uh, recent weeks on the Philadelphia Eagles, believes that uh, the Eagles uh, right now might be just as good, if not better, than Detroit. I know there are injuries in Detroit, and that got, that got a lot to do with it. Uh, but Mark uh, does not feel that way. So I want to kind of give you guys an opportunity. Uh, I, would like to, to, I would like to counter that a little bit. The only reason I feel that way is because – Detroit's defense has been substantially yeah. better than people give it credit for. But now all these injuries sure. are kind of a cluster group of injuries. They got 11 defensive players are, for God's sake. Well, let's keep in but, mind, too, only I two mean, of them on, matter. On Wednesday, on Wednesday, they got guys off a practice team for another practice team, squad, yeah. and they were on the field last night playing. Well, I mean, the, 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 the coach didn't even know their names. That's why I feel Philadelphia is better. And they're coming and yet, on and they're, and they're healthier. And yet Detroit just keeps on winning. That's what's so awesome about uh, their season that they're having. Uh, and it's so beautiful to watch. You know, if you're like me and you have crappy coaches and you've had cra crappy coaches for so long, you can it, – it, maybe it's easier for you then to see really good coaching by the way they design plays. You're like, man, I wish my team designed plays like that. Why can't I have a that, coaching staff that, that understands that mismatches and things of that nature? It's that just, team is well well coached for sure. Yeah. And anyway, so I want you I want you guys to go ahead and um, uh, go ahead and debate uh, Philadelphia as the best team right now in the NFL versus Mark, who does not believe Philadelphia is the best team in the NFL. I think Philadelphia is right there, but go, uh, sure. But you know, who is the best team? I guess the best team is whoever wins this week out of the out of the the cast of uh, of the nominees, and you know, and I think Detroit, Philadelphia, are the two obvious in the NFC, and they're the obvious because they're the only two teams in the league that rank in the top ten both offensively and defensively. So you don't believe in Buffalo, but that, well, well, that, that's the other side. That's an AFC team. I'm well, right. talking NFL, yeah. right? The whole okay. league, but they're both in the NFC and they're Philadelphia and Detroit. So what they do offensively, they they're just as good defensively, and that's the key ingredient to making it to a Super Bowl. And I'll go on record as saying right now, I will be stunned if Philadelphia and Detroit don't meet in the NFC Championship game this year. So where are the I, warts? I, I totally agree, Mark. Totally agree. Where are the warts then on uh, Philadelphia, Mark? Uh, I would say you know people want to. You can start with the quarterback because. His numbers aren't up there with Jared Goff's. You know, Jared Goff's an extremely accurate passer. His quarterback ratings are top three in the in the in the league, and Hertz are not. Uh, Hertz benefits largely from Saquon Barkley and the running game, uh, and the Philadelphia defense. And Hertz improvises. Uh, he's a little bit like uh, Lamar Jackson, but uh, Lamar Jackson's improved immensely in the past three years. And Hertz has not. Hertz is more to me. He's a person that uh, he just directs the football team. I, all he has to do is not make mistakes, and the, and they'll be okay. But the success for Philadelphia has come. I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jim. It's largely attributable to Saquon Barkley in that defense. Well, I I would agree with that. I do also say that a couple of years ago they were in the Super Bowl and they almost won the damn thing. Yep, and they they were there, and this is kind of a the same team. I mean, yeah, they lost Kelsey and, and all that, but they do have that unique little thing called the tush push, which actually matters because they when they get in the red zone, it's really difficult to stop them with that that unique thing that they do. Nobody else seems to be able to do it, and um, th and and the running game, the the addition of Barkley has been absolutely amazing. The fact that the Giants got rid of him and kept Jones, it, it's just absolutely incredible that they did that. And he is playing so well. But their offensive line is opening those holes, so you have yes, to give some credit there as well. Well, that's the we whole idea there, Jim, is the offensive line. If the Giants well, have kept Barkley yeah, well, this year, you can't run Barkley would have 500 top. yards. He wouldn't, he wouldn't play well as, as like he's playing now. He doesn't have the absolutely, team around him. Absolutely not. I have to go back to last year. And and this always this I really question how the hell this happened, 
but they were so good in the beginning of the year and opened up. I think they were like 10 and one mm -hmm. and then they crashed. Yes, they did. And I, I still don't understand what happened. Coaching. That's why they but got they, rid of both but coordinators. But in they're the still season. there. The coach no, is still no. there. No, no, no. The co coordinators. Offensive and defensive coordinators. Oh, they got they rid of both of them. Right. right. Yeah. Right. They were they were bad because they had the two guys uh, got uh, head coaching jobs. And so they had to replace them. And the guys they replaced them with, apparently, were not very were, good. Were not that good. Yeah. And uh, also, they never run a game. Let's keep that in mind. I mean, Bark, look, again, just Barkley has just been so amazing for them, which is the reason why he's probably, you would think, he's got to be up there one, two, three as far as MVP. MVP comeback player of the year, both, you know, who knows, right? I got that ticket on our show. We did those uh, predictions on the awards. I hit that. Yeah. I hit Barkley. Nice. So, uh, but anyway, yeah. Um, the, the championship game, if it is between those two teams, it might come down to who has home field. Could, because could one is indoors. Yep. And the other is not. Track indoors, and the other will be outside in potential weather. And Detroit is only going to play two games outside all year. So right. if it gets to be that in the playoffs in January where it's cold and they're not uh, acclimated to that, it could end up being like a Miami Dolphin visiting Buffalo type scenario. So, you know, Detroit has this – they have to overcome this defensive injuries because they're not going to get away with what they did last night against Green Bay, giving up 30 points and still being able to outscore them unless they can – and they have to fix that defense and that – Fixing a defense that's got all these injuries, I don't know how the hell they're going to do it. Well, they're not the Bengals' defense. Uh, that helps. <laughs> uh, but I think the thing is, is, and you guys have talked about it a lot, and that is, but really, who's going to beat them? Philadelphia? Okay, well, who else? So they don't really have – it's not like there's a ton of teams out there. Okay, first round, second round, third round. They have to – first over Super Bowl. They got all these teams they got to beat. You know, basically they're going to beat Philadelphia. They got to beat one team. And if they get the home field, they got to beat one team at home. And I do think that they'll get – because the thing is, Hutchinson is the only guy that's out long term. And if you saw last night, he had another great game. It was Darius Smith. Again, that's what a great organization does. They lose Hutchinson, they bring in, they make a deal at the deadline to bring in Zadarius Smith. From the Browns, yeah. And now Zadarius Smith is running around the the, the, the field the last two weeks uh, creating havoc. So that was a big – so that's a big – right there you're talking about the injuries. Right there they've answered that one question. Hutchinson out, Zadarius Smith replace him. That's good. Uh, they have to get Anzalone back. Uh, you know, he's, he's, he's a good part of that. Um, so, yeah, they've got a couple of injuries, but, again, like – I'd say seven of those players you mentioned, Jim, they're replaceable. It's not going to dictate whether or not Detroit wins the Super Bowl or not. Um, but who do you think has the best chance of, if there is a surprise, if Detroit or, 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 or Philly does not, they don't play each other. But one's there and the other's not. I'm not going to ask you which one won't be there. Which team do you think would be there? Well, because, because, of, because, of, the, get there? because, of, because of the health, I'll, I'll go back to it. If their defense can't hold up, they could easily. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, I'm not asking you to tell me who's not going to be there. If one well, of them isn't there, which other team would, would you bet on to be in the championship game? Who would Minnesota. be the third most logical team to be there? Yep, Minnesota. I would say to that too, and the reason I say that is, is because I really, really dig deep into the stats, and when I look at the Minnesota. Um, body of work this football season here. I think they've only been out yarded two times this year. They win the stats almost every friggin' game. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with uh, uh, Darnold and uh, him being a comeback player of the year candidate and a legitimate one. That's uh, right. And, you know, they have to get past Green Bay, which I think they're going to do uh, because that's the, those two top two teams in the division are going to make a little bit of noise. And Green Bay is a kind of a team that maybe nobody's going to want to meet in the playoffs. I'm not saying that they bring a lot to the table, but uh, they're a pretty well-balanced football team. But I would agree with Jim Minnesota, if for no other reason, I don't think there's anybody in the West that stands out because San Francisco is really reeling right now with the injuries. Yeah, the other teams uh, to keep an eye on would be if Seattle were to beat Arizona and stay hot, We'll see what, what they could do because they do have weapons um, and their defense is becoming opportunistic now with the defensive coach. 
Uh, but uh, I, I still think Tampa Bay would be interesting because Baker is playing at such a high level that you put him in a in a you know in a in a, in a winner take all game. And let's keep in mind, last year the playoff game, that second round game between Tampa Bay and Detroit was close. That was not an easy game for Detroit. Uh, and uh, now I think Tampa Bay might have been personnel wise more equipped to beat Detroit last year because there's some more injuries for Tampa Bay this year. But still, uh, I think Tampa Bay could be a really interesting wild card, and I expect the Bucs to get to the playoffs. Well, I see Atlanta losing this week I, because they're they're in a tough spot in Minnesota, and and the, the, the there's a problem with Cousins. I don't know what it is, but he's thro- he's throwing the ball slower than I can throw the ball, and which is a bad thing, believe me. And he there's something wrong with his arm. That if it, I don't know, he was throwing muffins out there last week, got intercepted four times. They're going to put pressure on him. And, and, you know, he, he's, he's an older, he's not young. If, if nobody talks about the, he's not a young guy. He is in that 36 to 38 year old thing. And that's not a good position for most quarterbacks, especially coming off injuries. He had the Achilles. He does have something wrong with his right arm. I don't know what it is, but he is not throwing the ball with velocity. So, and Baker, Baker, I don't know. Baker's a warrior. He comes out of college. Great. He goes to Cleveland. Cleveland messes everybody up, of course, but he's, he's a warrior. That guy plays hurt. He's walking around in a a boot this week, for God's sake, you know, so, but he's going to play, you know, he's not going to sit out. He played in a pickup league in Oklahoma when he transferred from Texas Tech to Oklahoma. And in between, he played pickup football on campus. Half the players that were playing didn't even know who he was. <laughs> <laughs> but that's his love of the game, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, when, he was in, when he was in Cleveland, maybe he was doing too many progressive commercials or maybe something. Maybe he was. But it didn't work out. <laughs> well, remember, they were very immature is what they said. Well, remember, yeah. he, he, he was the quarterback that – when they broke that long streak, as you guys know, as Browns fans, he was their quarterback, and it wasn't until his injury. And then once he got hurt, he it never it never happened. It never clicked again there in Cleveland. I don't know why, but it never clicked again there. So you know, I saw a great video. Kurt Warner was uh, uh, analyzing Baker May- Mayfield, and he was taking a lot of heat. Mayfield was uh, because. Uh, balls apparently weren't where they were supposed to be thrown in all this and that. And uh, Warner made a great point. He says, look at, he says, it's not Baker Mayfield. It's his wide receivers. They're not going to where they're supposed to be going. And Baker's throwing where they're supposed to be going. And and it was, it was the case of the wide receivers, not mm-hmm. running their patterns. Yeah. That's Quarter- it. Quarterback looks bad and takes all the heat, you know, that's it. Yep. And, uh... Yeah. People, people think you actually throw the ball to where the, the, the wide receiver is. It's no. actually you're throwing the ball to where he's supposed to go. He's supposed to be. Because exactly I, right. I mean, if you wait till he gets to the play, you can't play that way. You have to anticipate where they're going. And most average fans don't realize that. It's not pitch and catch with your son. It, this is a whole different game. Well, that was the big rift between him and Odell Beckham Jr. because they didn't get along at all because Beckham is a total freelancer. And it, it doesn't work when you're supposed to be in an area and throwing the ball. And that's the reason they had the big rift, those two. Yeah. But we're getting off on a Baker Mayfield uh, trail yeah. here. But, but he, <laughs> he, he's the kind of guy that, with the kind of a team, Jim, I think you'd say that nobody's going to want to play in the NFC playoffs. No. No. And, and Evans is back. So that's good. He's dangerous. There's no yep. question. Now, but, of course, you do, have to, you do have the problem with Evans, who continually is hurt. He plays, he comes back, but he's constantly hurt. Well, that's, that's it. They got to keep him, and that's the whole idea with the injuries. That's where, if you take a look at the AFC, Kansas City, uh, they're get, matter of fact, we're going to be posting. I was just before we came on, I was just editing uh, an interview I did uh, with my uh, Chiefs insider over on uh, our lads, and I edited uh, three segments that we're going to put together here on uh, our channel here. And uh, it was, and, and a lot of them had to do with the injuries, and that the players not only it's not only the, uh, the tackle position, uh, which we'll see this week with DJ Humphreys, but it's also getting Pacheco back last week. They're going to be getting Marquise Brown back in the next week or two. Uh, and again, just imagine now in the, in a couple of weeks, you're going to have Pacheco backfield, Travis Kelsey, 
DeAndre Hopkins, uh, Marquise Brown, Xavier Worthy, a left tackle now that's competent. The offensive line is going to be fine. And that hasn't happened to the Chiefs all season. So we're going to see the best of the Chiefs coming up in the next few weeks. And it's just scary to believe what could possibly happen. So I don't see any way that you could take care of and take advantage of that, though, unfortunately, because they've won all those. I wish they had lost a few of those games. So maybe their Super Bowl futures would be a lot better. But they're, they're still so low that you can't really take advantage of it, though. And you know, you, here, now, you have, now you have on the other side this week a lot of people talking about the Chargers. You've got Harbaugh. You've got to give him all the credit in the world. But – and I'm gonna. I might get this name wrong. McConkey, I think, is possibly yeah. out. Yeah, McConkey, yeah. And then there's another player on the offense. That another receiver that's running also back. out. The running back, starting running backs out. Running back, right? I mean, th this is a team that doesn't generate a lot of points anyway. And now you're going up against a much healthier Chiefs team at a very low point spread. It, it, this is not a typical point spread for the Chiefs at home. No, it's not because they're the Chiefs, okay? And they right. usually they carry weight, but the odds maker is obviously obviously acknowledging the Chargers and their ability to win this football game. Uh, you, you, the, the, we, we did a podcast. We were doing a podcast with Gamers World, who's going to be on our ProLine network. And uh, we were talking about the Chiefs and about their close call games, the, 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 in the inordinate amount of close call games that they've played this year. Tremendous. And, oh, and the, the point was made that, you watch and see what happens. And Greg, you bring out a great point about these people coming back for the Chiefs. It gets to be playoff time. It gets to be the Super Bowl run. And all of a sudden, they get to the Super Bowl. They're not going to win the Super Bowl by 18 points. It's not going to be a close call Kansas City anymore because they've been there. They've done that this year. And suddenly, they've got players in the lineup here right now. So, you know, they're playing their bad football now, maybe perhaps saving their best football for last, for late. I mean, you don't win. You don't win the Super Bowl in in September and October and November. You got to no. win it in February. Right. So it, it, it's kind of like an ant. Who's better? Who who has better coaches than Spags and Reed? And their and, special teams coordinator. <laughs> All three of them. That's the, their these positions. guys. Are, these guys are good. And you know, you got that guy Holmes guy. You ever hear him? He's oh, pretty that, good too. That quarterback guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, now wait a minute. We do have Swifty in the stands. Oh yes, we do. And do. you know, you talk about numbers and trends and everything. And you know, I'm kind of a trend <laughs> freak. Okay, their record when she's in attendance is unbelievable. Is and that when right? she's not, that's mediocre. <laughs> Tell me why. <laughs> yeah, she didn't make that trip to Buffalo. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, and and that's uh, right there. Uh, I wonder. See if Buffalo can't catch Kansas City. And all they got to do is catch them at the tiebreaker. But if they can't, then Buffalo in Kansas City is just going to be so I, – I just don't see it. I just can't see Buffalo beating Kansas City and Kansas City in the postseason in the championship game. I'm not saying they're going to definitely beat him at home. But, I, you know, but and sometimes you can say, yeah, you know what, I, I just think they're so good. It doesn't matter. I, I don't think – you know, or maybe the pressure's off. Maybe it's better than on the road. But in this scenario, I just can't see Buffalo beating the Chiefs unless they get them at home. Well, it will then have been two wins in a row for Buffalo over the Chiefs in the same season. And that's kind of hard to, to uh, swallow that as well. And that game was not that far apart till the no, very no, end. And Joe, no. and, you know, and, and it, 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 it was great. I mean, the quarterback that Buffalo has is, is tremendous. And he yeah. can do a lot of shit. I mean, he can do a lot of stuff. And he's now, still not and about they, Buffalo. I mean, Buffalo this week, they just clinched the AFC East for the like the fifth time in a row. And now they got to travel across country to play the Rams, who are desperate. Who not very good like team. Blood, right? It's not a it's not a very good team, but and they've just terrible game against Philly and a terrible game against Miami at home. So you're saying can, can they step up? And win a game. Well, if Buffalo's not totally focused, if they're not, if they're celebrating, but now they and they're going to Detroit next week. Next week. Just and then they play. close out the season with three division games in a row. Not and a good so, spot for Buffalo this week. Yeah, yeah. Well, they yeah. better uh, they better not fall asleep because if they do, when they get two games behind the Chiefs, then it's probably over. So uh, they better. Be yeah, I mean, do you see it. any place where I mean? Any place in there that the Chiefs have such a hard game? Come, I didn't look at their schedule. 
the next well, five games. What do they week, look like? This I mean, week this is, week is, is a tough one. You're dealing, you're dealing with the Chargers, but I think the Chargers might be too banged up. But Speaking of someone who bet Chargers earlier this week. <laughs> if they weren't hurt, uh, if they weren't hurt and lost those two players, I would probably be on the Chargers, but, but I'm not. I thought, oh, Actually, I thought you said you were. You should check back. Check your, check your bank account. I could have sworn you said you were earlier this week. No, um, well, I would I would have been if they weren't hurt. But I'm a big injury guy. Like I, you know. Yeah, but you but you you bet NFL games on Sunday for the Sunday yeah, next I, for the Sunday next I, week. Well, we we all of us that are professional betters take leads take leads on, on Sunday. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we look at numbers that are bad numbers, and we know they're going to move if there's injuries. So we do take leads on them. Yes, of course. Uh, Houston, Houston, Pittsburgh, and Denver, their last three games. Well, they so, could, they, they could, they could lose those games. And the last two are on the road. Capable. Next, week, Pittsburgh, next week's at Cleveland. Weather. Watch out for Cleveland. Yeah, that would be the only hope. You know, hope one thing this. about Jameis, all I can say is he's going to score for both teams. You better bet it over. Because <laughs> <laughs> when that first number comes out, pound the over. <laughs> exactly. Well, Buffalo's he's, he's, last three games, though, I mean, New England, Jets, New England. Come on. So, well, whose last three games is that? Buffalo. New, New England, England, Jets, Jets New, New England. England. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. They're going to be so soft when the playoffs come. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. You're yeah. right. Everybody plays like that, right? Oh. All right. So, anyway, this is week 14 in the NFL, conference championship week in college football. Next week. Uh, we'll be on to talk about the playoffs. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully, Mark will be back on Playbook ATS. Uh, that is now on Wednesdays here on ProLine TV. So uh, we're looking forward to that. Can't the, only, wait. the only iffy thing for me next week this is is this, Greg, is we're putting together our college bowl guide. Okay? Uh oh. And that is a <laughs> nutcracker. Okay. Uh oh. That is a nutcracker. So you we may be hoping one more week. Okay. <laughs> Do you, do, Mark, do you do that all yourself or you have help? Oh, I have help, believe me. But uh, you know what I do, Jim, is I, I, I'm i like the uh, uh, the chef in the kitchen. I'm putting all the ingredients together, okay? And then I'm has, passing them off to everybody and saying, okay, you make this, you make this, you make this, you make this. Uh, really? And But I have to get all the ingredients put together to have to pass off to these guys. That's what takes my time. And then I have to I, – I write all the NFL in the newsletter too. So I don't, I don't, think, I don't think people appreciate how much work you put into that and of course then you do the annual i don't i don't think people realize how, how difficult all that is well no. i could tell you this i've we haven't been on vacation in like 15 years so that's the answer to that okay <laughs> well, what why would you want to go on vacation you're having so much fun I exactly yeah. right <laughs> uh sunday uh i'm definitely going to air a show because it's 12 o'clock release of the 12 team playoff uh espn of course coverage they're going to put it all together before the sunday one o'clock kickoffs uh so that's when everybody's going to know what the 12 team bracket's going to look like in college football on sunday i don't know whether or not it'll be live or we'll just uh, have a recorded uh video here but it'll definitely be on sunday uh so that is going to be i wonder Who are how you doing it with greg that. yourself or for our lads or for whom well i'm going to do it for uh our lads but i'll definitely uh swing over uh the edited version on this channel uh on the same day so uh we'll, we'll have it on here as well uh, over on uh both our lay our lads football channel and of course here at proline tv um and then that's it then we're off and running so um, that's going to be a very I, – I, I can imagine what kind of ratings they're going to get for that one. I mean, that should Pro, be pretty What, what kind of ratings ProLine TV is going to get? Because I'm awfully excited about ProLine. <laughs> I'm telling you, this. I, I'm really excited about what it is we're doing here, guys. I think we're yeah. going to I, – I think it has a tremendous future. I think I mean, we're going to turn this, a, turn this world upside down. I'm not a professional social yes. guy, but I think, I think we got – the people – I mean, the whole idea is – put a site together with really quality people that know what the hell they're talking about. Exactly. And, you know, because anybody can go and make videos. Mark, I'm not tooting our own horn, but you and I have been in this damn thing six decades. Yeah. We've forgotten. We forgot more than most people know. <laughs> we're not a journalist coming out of school. We're getting a salary and, and somebody's writing the script for us. We actually are in this 
this is our life work. And I, I mean, I did it. I did a chip Charimbus Paul Bovey with the, 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 uh, the cha- what's gamblers world. Gamblers world? Yeah. Yeah. Jim, the Quigley thing. Yeah. And th- th- me talking about people, Chipper just hit 13 straight college basketball games for God's sake. And, and Bovey had two entries into the survivor to the end. He just lost one. He lost so one he of them. Still has one left, but there's only 50 people left out of 14,300 people. You know how hard that is. I, I mean, did a show with him and I asked him, he had, at the time I did it, he had three entries. And I said, are you wanting to sell one of them? He says, absolutely not. And I said, well, why wouldn't you lock up some money? He says, because you know, I'm not people, in it for the money. People, I'm don't, in it to people win this don't realize, I mean, t- Paul's a big better and he's a big winner. And I know that I know him very well. He's extremely smart, very smart. He knows what the hell he's doing. When he says something, you better listen. I, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> So and then I yesterday, the thing- yesterday I did the show at the Dom DeMarco's here. We every week we have great people on there, all professional gamblers, all of them. Except yesterday we had one of your friends on um, Bernie uh, Fratto. Yeah. Oh God, am I? Nobody knows more jokes and stories than Bernie. Than, He's absolutely nobody. the best, Jim. The Unbelievable. Best. But we also had Aaron Renning, who's a professional better. Yes. We've had we've had Matt Yeomans on. We've had a lot. It, that was our eighth show, and every week we have two or three guests. Nice. The shows are tremendous. Well, they're going to be all part of ProLine, which is terrific, which I yep. love. Right. Yeah. Well, well, I, if, all you got to do is check it out right now, because if you're watching it's, it's this there video, every week. I mean, I know it's in the library. Greg so we've already posted it. It's uh, the thing is about Vegas. You're not going to find as many professional gamblers that are actually successful at it anywhere in the world than here than under one roof yes under that's one the way roof. it should be yeah, yes it's 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 ama- amazing what the quality of people that come in there to be on that show it's an unbelievable uh, week after week your your guests are all people like uh, of a who's who that's really nice that's great. i mean i sit i mean i contribute to it and stuff again I mean, but I listen to the, what they're saying and how they analyze. I mean, we've had people on there that nobody has ever heard of. This one guy started with 300 bucks. He's now a multimillionaire, all from betting sports. Really? Yes. I don't want to mention his name because he doesn't like to be well known. Okay. But it's unbelievable. Because he doesn't want people hitting him up for a loan is what you mean. <laughs> oh, I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I think yeah, one of the things that uh, I, I'm excited about here at ProLine is the fact that we have uh, every sport covered. So, you know, it's not just NFL, uh, baseball, and basketball. I love the fact that, you know, if you're a fan of, I mean, if you like just horse racing, if you like motorsports, if you like golf, uh, anything, if you like well, college that, but- well, that's you, Greg. I mean, you know all the right people to talk to. I mean, that's, you know, you're, I, I watched those and I said, Mike, man, he's talking to the best people. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Like that's you said, is bringing in the people who have a legitimate background and know what they're talking about. And this Correct. is what they do for a living. And that's what you have to do because you, 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 don't, you don't know everything about every sport. You don't have the time for it. So. I was having a conversation with Aaron Renning yesterday at lunch because we always eat lunch there. And Mark, have you ever been to Don DeMarco's pizza? No, but I'm going to go there for sure oh, on my next oh, visit. The, the food is the food's incredible. Bernie and, and Fredo told me it's not it's not good food. It's terrific food. Oh, it's it's awesome. Said, I can't eat there every the church, day because if I, if I ate there every day, I'd be 250 pounds. Wow. I mean, this is this it's ridiculous. Well, it's they do so make salad, Albert, Albert Scalliot is the owner, and he just demands perfection from all of I mean, the servers are great, the food is great. The atmosphere is great, and and it's in your backyard, isn't it? It's five minutes from my house. Yeah. Well, then you then you have to eat there a lot. No, I have to I have to go the other way because I can't go there. <laughs> it's, the food is too good. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's too good. And I'm a, I'm Italian. I love Italian food, and this Italian food is fantastic. <laughs> they have a sausage and peppers dish that I loved. It was an appetizer, and then they added it into the main course and sausage, peppers, and Bow tie pasta. Oh, I can't. Boy. I mean, I, I can't. I leave the too much. Ah, forget it. It's just way too much. 
You're going to call a takeout in after, right after we get done. I know that. <laughs> no, I can't. It's already, believe me, I brought one home. It's in the refrigerator. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so next week, uh, it's the college football playoffs. Finally, here after uh, ever. So we've never had a 12-team playoff. It starts next week. We'll be talking about that. We're getting into week 15 in the NFL. Can't wait for that. And don't forget, once the football season is over, we're picking up right up where the college basketball season starts to get interesting uh, in January and February. Conference play. Yeah. Yep. So we'll be talking about college basketball. Of course, there's also NBA, NHL, uh, and then uh, other sports, including uh, Major League Baseball, will have their uh, – I know they're even doing their winter meetings now, so there'll be some – I'm sure there'll be some hot stove uh, stuff to talk about uh, as well as uh, everything else going on. I want to know who the hell's going to beat the Dodgers after they sign Snell. I mean, how many good players can this team have? I mean, well, they're they're the Yankees of the West Coast. That's what they are, you know. Well, they're yeah, way better. Better. Than, better I than. mean, the Yankees never have any pitching. They just hit the ball over the fence a lot. This right. team, this, this pitching staff, if you, I mean, could I mean, it's unbelievable what they have. Well, and Bueller and Bueller picked up at the end of the year and started. Walker to pitch Bueller, he came back from injury, right? Yes, I mean, that's I mean, and Otani and Otani didn't even pitch last year. Yeah, they, good. They didn't need him to. And I no. wonder if he'll pitch next year. I really don't think he will. I I don't think he will. I don't think they'll need to use him as a pitcher. I think they'll just focus on his stick. I really do. Maybe he doesn't get paid enough. To you, pitch. Know, you think? We, no, seven hundred. We, 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 we got to get him a good agent and have him renegotiate that contract. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Good talking to you once again. Uh, All right, Mark, guys. Hopefully, we'll be back on this show next Friday because yes. he's most likely not going to be on the playbook show next that Wednesday sounds like once again. That. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, I'm so, kind of like throwing a little forewarning out there. <laughs> yeah. I want, to, I want to show you somebody. You see this guy? Oh boy. Can you see him? You Look see at him? him. That's it. That's Zorro. Zorro. He's an 85 pound healthy horse boxer. Give him the food in the fridge. He knows it's in there. Yeah, I'm sure he does. <laughs> That's why he sits near the refrigerator all night, <laughs> waiting for a mistake. Yes. You know we got to do. There's a subject that I, I I was telling. I was talking to Aaron Running about it yesterday at lunch. A professional gambler wakes up in the morning and he's got to take his money and invest it again in gambling. The person that goes to work, whether they're making fifty thousand a year, a hundred thousand a year, they don't do that. They go to work, they get a paycheck or, you know, the bonuses at the end of the year, maybe pay, pay the bill. Being a professional gambler is so much harder than people give it credit for because everybody wants to be one, but they don't understand the money you won yesterday. You got to put to the window again today. Yep. And that's the risk. And Lee Trevino once said that he was a professional golfer, a tremendous golfer. He said, I can beat anybody out here because none of them, know how to risk their own money. They're playing for the pot of gold from the tournament, but I make my living by betting my money against people every week. So, and he, fearless. And there's a set, there's a, there's a mentality in that. that for, the, for the professional be, gambler, yes. Because you're always putting your money back in the window again. So you can go eight and one today, but you can go one and eight the next day and this that's why most people fail at what we do because, yeah, because no it's the mentality of risking your dollars every day having to refuel every day right it's it's very stressful so you have to have that that mentality to be able to do that i think we should dig into that sometime we will we'll, we'll do it over a pizza at dom demarcos for sure okay you got it you got it <laughs> and the All sausage right, and peppers Go eat, go, eat, go eat, Jim. Go eat the sausage and peppers. And we'll see everybody next week. All right, guys. Have a great weekend, okay? Take care, guys.